Linux is really just a bunch of little community projects all doing their own thing. But over time, standards do start to develop, and currently there are two massive changes happening to those standards. That being with our display server and our audio server, so moving from the X11 protocol and Xorg over to the Wayland protocol and Wayland compositors, along with moving from Pulse Audio over to Pipewire. But if you've been paying any attention to this space whatsoever, you would realize that one of these is being adopted way quicker than the other. Pipewire is being adopted at a lightning pace compared to Wayland. Now, obviously, Pipewire and Wayland are two very, very different projects, but they're both trying to achieve the same thing, basically, replacing an existing standard, and that's never an easy thing to do. So I want to talk about why Pipewire is having a much, much easier time at doing this. One important thing to note about Pipewire is Pipewire intends to be basically just a drop-in replacement for the existing audio systems, obviously for Pipewire. Pulse Audio for the regular Linux users, if all you do for audio work is, you know, plug in devices and change volume levels, but even for more advanced audio chains, Pipewire Jack also exists as well. That is where you start seeing it's not perfect at this stage, but it's, from what I can tell, gotten pretty good. That section of Linux, though, is a very small subsection, as long as the Pulse Audio stuff is working, 99% of people are going to be happy. But over on the Wayland side, it's not like that at all. Now, someone might be saying, oh, but what about X Wayland? And what about X Wayland? X Wayland is not intended to give you drop in functionality for the entirety of Xorg. Obviously, it's great in places where the GUI framework does not run natively on a Wayland compositor. But what if I wanted to run something like Awesome WM? That's the window manager I'm currently using. That will not work through X Wayland. Or what if I want to use something like SXHKD, which is the hotkey jam I'm using? That won't work because of the way the Wayland security model actually functions. Or XRand, or any of the other applications I'm used to using over on Xorg. Now, obviously, on the Wayland side, there's going to be replacements for a lot of these applications, but a replacement is not as convenient as easy as a drop-in replacement. If I need to go and learn all of these extra new tools, that is an extra learning curve there that isn't there if literally everything I have just works like it did before. But when we talk about these replacements for things like hotkey daemons, for screen sharing, for gamma settings, this takes us into the next problem. So when we talk about Xorg versus Wayland, it's not exactly a fair comparison because Xorg is an implementation of the X11 protocol, whereas Wayland is just the Wayland protocol. If we're actually doing a fair comparison, it would be something like comparing Xorg with Sway, for example. And if we go back to the early days of X11, it looks like the current state of Wayland. We have all of these different implementations of the protocol, and half of them are completely incompatible with each other. You need different applications written for the different display servers, and it's honestly just a big mess. Now, having it be a protocol that you build on top of does give individual projects a lot of flexibility to try new things out. Let's say there's some problem. I know this one has been solved, but let's go with screen sharing. So all of the different Wayland compositors can go and implement their own different solutions to the problem. And then in a perfect world, we could all come together and decide, okay, this is going to be the standard we all work with. But we don't live in a perfect world. So what ends up happening in reality is you have all of these different solutions that some work on different compositors because some use the same base but others are just like, well, it only works here, and if you want to use it elsewhere, write it yourself, I guess. Whereas over on the Pipewire side, it doesn't have that same level of flexibility, but by getting rid of that, it doesn't have to worry about standards, because Pipewire defines what the Pipewire standards are. Pipewire isn't a protocol, it is just an implementation of an audio server. So if you go and, you know, fork Pipewire, Obviously, that's perfectly fine to do, but that fork is no longer Pipewire. Next up, we have the driver issue. So regardless of whether we're using Pulse Audio, Pipewire, Jack, or even just plain Ulcer, 
none of these actually require new audio drivers to get these audio servers actually working. You could right now go and write a completely new audio server and get it working perfectly fine. Because ever since we swapped from open sound system at the kernel level, what we've been using is the also audio drivers inside of the kernel. Everything else, whether it's Pulse Audio, whatever you're using, sits on top of those drivers. None of the audio servers actually change those. Wayland, on the other hand, doesn't have that same luxury. Obviously, it's going to be interacting with the GPU drivers coming from AMD, NVIDIA, Intel, Qualcomm if you're using an ARM-based system, or whatever else is out there. But these drivers need to be updated to support various features inside of Wayland. This is why on the NVIDIA side, for example, getting GPU acceleration through X Wayland has been a challenge to say the least. And obviously Wayland hasn't always worked perfectly over on AMD either, but AMD has a history of playing nicely with Linux and properly supporting their projects. NVIDIA on the other hand, well, we know how Linus Torvalds feels about them. Another thing that Pipewire has going for it is Pulse Audio isn't exactly the most well-liked piece of software, we'll say. If you go look on Reddit and early Linux forums, you'll see people saying things like, oh, it frequently crashes or the distro ship with broken configs. These days, at least in my experience, Pulse Audio has been basically perfect. Some of the issues, you know, there are issues that do exist, but they're fairly minor. But first impressions typically last, and the first impressions of Pulse Audio were pretty bad. So when something comes along and says, I will be Pulse Audio, but I will not be bad, does it really surprise you that a lot of people start to flock to it? What about Xorg on the other hand? Well, obviously you'll have the Wayland Zealots who'll say things like, oh, it's incredibly complex and barely maintained. It never has new releases. It has horrible security, no security model whatsoever. And sure, that's all absolutely true, but what about with the regular Linux users? Does anybody complain that Xorg just doesn't work? It crashes all the time. Anything that actually matters to a regular user. No, I, I've never heard anybody complain about Xorg unless they're going out of their way to do things that, you know, weren't set up by default. And if their current system just works, no one's going to rush to get rid of it. And the last thing is even on Xorg, there are reasons why you might want to use Pipewire. Let's say you want to use something like Easy Effects, which used to be Pulse Effects, or maybe you want to, you know, have both Jack and Pulse Audio being managed by the same thing. These are, you know, valid reasons to use it. But Wayland, on the other hand, it basically requires you using Pipewire. So the bigger that Wayland gets, the bigger that Pipewire gets, but Pipewire doesn't need Wayland to actually grow. What I mean by this is things like screen capture is done through Pipewire. And I know some people are going to say, oh, but I don't need that. But it's such a basic functionality that most people are going to want it. Now, I know some people are going to misunderstand this, but don't take this as me just trashing Wayland and saying, you know, no one should ever use it. I think that Wayland is the future. It's probably not the future for like another 15 years, but it is the future that is going to happen. And I will be happy to move over as like a permanent thing when I deem it ready for my use cases. Right now, I just don't think it's in that state. One day, both of these are going to be the standard on desktop Linux. Obviously, today isn't that day. But one of these standards is going to happen much, much quicker than the other. So that's going to be pretty much it for me. Let me know in the comment section down below if you completely disagree with me and you think Wayland is just around the corner and everybody is already about to adopt it. I don't think that's the case, but... Sure, let me know. That's going to be it for me. And if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon subscribers on the Pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel where I play video games. That's not the outro I do. Brody Robinson plays twice a week, five YouTube shorts. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.